Logitech sent me their new craft keyboard and it's fantastic, but it's expensive. $200 for a keyboard. Keep in mind, you can, for $20, you can get a Logitech wireless keyboard and mouse. So this is 10 times more than that and it doesn't include the mouse, but it's like a $200 keyboard. Like it feels like, it. I don't feel like it's overpriced. It is really hard after I've used this to go back to any other keyboard in the world. And I'm a keyboard snob. Like I've written 35 books. I spent a lot of time on the keyboard. And even on this one, you can see like I've already worn down some of the keys and stuff. I'm sure I'm gonna wear through this keyboard. Let's get started. Um, first of all, it's a wireless keyboard, uh, kind of. I will say that for me, with the backlighting on, I found that it only lasts like four or five days between charges. So I keep having to pull out a USB-C cable and plug it in. And it got to the point where I just permanently ran a USB-C cable so it would stay charged and connected. By contrast, my wireless mouse tends to work like three weeks at a time. So the charging is a little bit of a thing, but I'd been using a wired keyboard before this. So having a wire running to it hasn't been a big deal. I will say before we started this review, Justin said, yeah, I noticed you got a new keyboard because I could no longer hear you typing because I didn't even know I was doing this to the other people in the office, but apparently they could hear me typing all the time, clank, 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 clank on my old keyboard. But on the new keyboard, you hear that? It's basically silent. So if you're a mechanical keyboard snob, maybe you won't like that, but the keys have a fantastic action to it and you won't be bugging your neighbors as much. I'll say one gripe for me is that it doesn't have the little feet that flip out from the bottom. Like check out this other Logitech keyboard. It has these little feet here and that just puts it at an angle. It doesn't have that. It has a little bit of a tilt to it, but maybe I could find something. Here, just look at, Look at the contrast between my old wireless keyboard and the new Logitech wireless keyboard. This one is just so much nicer. But the standout feature on this isn't the keys themselves, though they work great. It's what they call the crown, but I'll probably just call it the dial. It's this dial here. And it does a variety of different things depending on what app you're in. So you can see right now I happen to be in Chrome because that's what I use for slideshows. And if I flip through here, it switches tabs. And I don't find that useful at all. I will probably never use it to switch tabs, but let's get into Lightroom and Photoshop and I'll show you what it can do. Here in the develop module, look, I can touch the crown and it switches between different options, different things that I can control. So let's switch over to exposure here and now I can just move the dial. Now, did you hear that little click there? Depending on the option that you're changing, the dial can be controlled smoothly or in increments. If you've ever used a, a video centric lens, sometimes they have a aperture ring with clicks or without clicks. So this dial is like that. It can be clicked or unclicked. And by just touching it, I switch between the four options that are there by default in Lightroom. Now, does this help my day? Does this actually make me more productive? In Lightroom, I've found the answer to be no, but it's because I'm already accustomed to using a mouse and I can just, you know, move the settings like this. And I find that to be really quick. And I tend to go through, you know, eight or nine different settings. And I think it would overall be slower for me to tap this and adjust the dial. If you want them to control different settings, you can open up the Logitech app here, go to the crown options here, and then pick the app that you want to customize. You can see it's configured mostly for the Adobe Creative Cloud apps. And then I can click the option that I wanna change here, like turn contextual. And you can see I have options for select tools. So I almost never change the temperature or the tint, but I do often change the highlights and the shadows and the whites and the blacks. And oh yeah, you gotta have more clarity and vibrance, right? <laughs> so, I'll change those. And if I switch back to Lightroom now, you can see I can touch this and now I can switch between all these different options. It's just a more analog experience than using a mouse. Where I find it to be extremely useful, something that actually makes me a more productive person is when I get into Photoshop and I'm using brushes. And that is the main use of it here in Photoshop is to uh, get more out of your brushes. So. For example, I might want to add a little more contrast to her face there. So let's pull up the burn tool and we'll just drop the mid tones a little bit. Now, 
You see the size of the brush? I can adjust the size of the brush by just turning the dial. So I can get in here and do that. Well, that didn't end up looking good. This makes it so nice. And then if I wanna change the hardness of the edge, I can do that from here or I can change the amount of exposure that it's applying. So I can really quickly adjust my brush. Now, in the past, I would do that with the mouse by going up here and then adjusting these sliders, or I would have to take my hand off the mouse and actually use the brackets. If I do the keyboard shortcut, that means I have to move my hand off the mouse and over to the keyboard. If I use this, then I have to actually move my mouse away from where I'm working, go up here and adjust the slide. So the fact that both my left and my right hand can participate in the whole brush process, which often requires so many different adjustments. So I've done a terrible job of Photoshopping this because I'm concentrating on talking, but hopefully you can see that in Photoshop, this is a really productive workflow. And for that reason alone, I'm going to keep this. I have tested a lot of separate products that offer different dials that provide that sort of analog experience. And I did not like them because they did not make me more productive. This, however, the fact that it is part of the keyboard and always available for use with my left hand has made a big difference. If I had one ask of Logitech, it would be to give me four of these dials up here so that I can each access them and I would have a dedicated dial that would do my brush size and a separate dial that would do the hardness or the exposure because the whole tapping to switch thing, I find it, I still haven't completely gotten used to it and it often just, it slows me down a little bit. It would just be quicker if I could just hit it with a different finger. If you have multiple computers, I know a lot of you will travel with the laptop and then you'll set it right next to your desktop and you have to work with files and stuff. This keyboard supports Logitech Flow, which makes it really easy to switch between different computers. You can even just use a Flow compatible mouse and pan over between different screens. So it's like you're working on a single computer with a single keyboard and mouse, but you're actually using different PCs or Macs and you're able to drag uh, files and copy and paste. I personally don't have a use for that, but I have dragged this between my upstairs computer and this computer, and it's really nice that it just switches automatically for me. There are little buttons here that let me configure which computer I'm controlling. The software gives you quite a bit of options, though I wish it gave me more customizability. I wish I could change every aspect and exactly which features did what in different applications. Maybe we'll see that in a future update, but in the meantime, you can configure whether the buttons up here do kind of the special tasks or if they act as standard function keys in case you already have those programmed to do something else. You can go in and disable the backlighting so that you use less power. Uh, you can also do things like disable your caps lock, something that should be the default in every version of operating systems ever made. Okay, if $200 for a really nice keyboard doesn't hurt you inside, then check out the Logitech Craft. I know it's a ton, but maybe you can get your boss to pay for it. sdp.io slash craft. Thanks so much.